I enjoyed Necromunda Hired Gun far more than I expected. Thanks to solid gameplay, that wasn't completely overshadowed by a general lack of polish and multiple bugs. It's easy to see which games the developers look to for inspiration, and as a result, Necromunda Hired Gun has solid foundations. However, it's hard to appreciate the good elements when you're dealing with wonky animations and progression halting bugs popping up every few missions. Necromunda Hired Gun plays out in the Underhive regions of Hive Primus, the capital of the Imperial Forge world of Necromunda, a barely controlled mass of humanity engaged in mass production of goods for the Imperium of Man, with exactly zero interest in preserving the environment. You can pick from a dozen male or female bounty hunters, and you find yourself sent on a mission to catch the killers of a Merchant's Guild member. It all goes wrong, and you find yourself part of an unfolding conspiracy in which everyone seems to know more about than you do. Necromunda Hired Gun liberally pulls characters and lingering plot threads from the Necromunda comics and, more recently, the Black Library novels. Fans of the IP will recognize the infamous bounty hunter Kel Jericho, who serves as the instigator for the initial investigation and a source of information during the story campaign. He suggests bounties to the protagonist that coincide with his own goals and even rocks up to save you a few times, but it's always clear he knows more than he's letting on and that you're just a tool. However, your bounty hunter seems to care little for the situation, despite spending plenty of time grumbling about it, and willingly goes through with any plan so long as the pay is good. The biggest problem with Necromunda Hired Gun is that the narrative barely moves forward for 75% of the experience. You get a prologue and opening mission that set the scene, there's a creepy mid-game mission that exists only to spice up the combat, and then you get the final two missions that feel suitably exciting and important. The rest of the game just boils down to you hunting down gang bosses, all in the hope of getting closer to a mysterious leader that is manipulating these gangs behind the scenes. In short, don't go into Necromunda Hired Gun looking for a compelling narrative experience. The good news is that the gunplay and traversal are far more rewarding. Battles play out at ridiculously high speeds, as you hurtle through the environment taking down foes. Player movement can feel too loose, and you'll often find yourself wall running or sliding past your target, but it comes close to matching the incredible Titanfall 2 experience. Although the game often locks you into arenas for combat sequences, they're always huge and you have access to a double jump, air dash, wall run and a grapple. It's just a shame it takes several stages and a few upgrades to hit its stride. When you're not moving, you're shooting, or sometimes moving and shooting at the same time. Linear corridor-like platforming areas with a fixed number of foes open up into large combat arenas. It then follows the Doom approach of locking you in, cranking up the music and spawning hordes of enemies. You move, shoot, and kill until it's done, and then move on. As for what you kill in Necromunda Hired Gun, well, it draws on all the gangs from the tabletop game and literature, but this still doesn't result in a particularly diverse roster as you'll encounter these same gangs repeatedly. Some gangs have goons with shields, some have ogrens, some have mechs, and the all-female Escher gang has psychers. However, it all becomes a blur by the end, outside of a few boss fights against some bullet sponge mechs, and gang leaders that function as common gang members with a massive HP pool. One of the reasons combat feels so good is the heavy hitting high recoil guns that tear through basic enemies on any difficulty level. Increasing the difficulty simply ups the damage output and the loot quality, not their health. I'm sure fans of the IP and purveyors of Warhammer 40k lore will be appalled at the thought of a human bounty hunter, even one with bionics, wielding a heavy bolter, but the weapons look and feel appropriate for that universe. That said, combat is not without a share of bugs and balance issues. The Doom-inspired melee finisher has no cooldown, it works on shield-bearing enemies, and, with a few upgrades, will even take down those with personal refractor shields. As a result, you can spam it to tear through basic enemies while taking minimal damage. What you're meant to be doing is staying mobile to minimize damage, relying on passive and active bionic upgrades that provide a degree of auto-aim while you're pulling off movement skills, think sliding or wall running. Elite enemies with refractor shields, or those with physical shields, adds a tactical component, but with the right weapon modifications, you can still brute force your way through. Spotting enemies in the midst of combat is tough, so you've got an upgradable Bionic Mastiff on a cooldown that highlights targets by default. With the right upgrades, they can also draw aggro and take a lot of damage, but when it comes to dealing damage, they only truly excel at dropping basic unshielded enemies. To keep ahead of the difficulty curve, something that's most pressing on hard difficulty and above. You'll need to collect loot, hunt for secret chests, and spend your credits upgrading your bionics, mastiff, and your weapons. 
These upgrades are a mix of active and passive skills, with subsequent upgrades increasing their effectiveness. The aforementioned auto aim perks are always a great choice, as are those that increase mobility, health, and your refractor shield level. You collect cells for this, it doesn't recharge like some other games. When it comes to your arsenal, you've got several weapons that fit into a pistol, basic, and heavy category. You can only carry five at a time, one of which was always your crappy starting pistol, and these range from revolvers to stub guns, auto guns, bolters, grenade launchers, las guns, and plasma guns. There are, of course, rarity tiers, and several modification slots that you can use to tweak their stats. Think damage, accuracy, shield penetration, or clip size. Armor and charms also come with different tiers, offering buffs and even environmental damage resistance. There's an entire metagame that revolves around tackling higher difficulties and purchasing items that increase the rarity of loot chest drops. Unfortunately, Necromunda Hired Gun feels a little too linear and fleeting to truly support all the RPG upgrades and looter shooter elements. To pad out the experience and provide players a chance to get all the bionic upgrades and high tier weapons, you have the option to do repeatable contract missions for several factions. It's a system that feels shoehorned in, as these contracts are not particularly engaging and offer only basic objectives in small environments that are pulled from the campaign maps. That said, if you're desperate for cash, you'll quickly discover there are some simple destroy object missions you can cruise through without even engaging enemies in just a few minutes. Should you feel compelled to grind these out and raise your faction bar, you'll eventually get gear as a reward in addition to the credits. Unfortunately, no matter what mission type you choose to tackle, you'll soon discover there's a serious lack of player damage feedback. Necromunda Hired Gun is a game in which you recover health by dealing damage or using melee finishes. As such, you'll spend a lot of your time in the thick of battle, making these sudden deaths due to a lack of feedback both annoying and it makes the difficulty feel random. Sure, there are checkpoints and an item that can even instantly revive you, but it still feels like combat balance needed some refinement. When it comes to the presentation, Necromunda Hired Gun is a mixed bag, but edges towards great. It has a fantastic art style that captures the ridiculous scale of the Warhammer 40k universe. It has solid performance, targeting 60 frames per second on the next-gen consoles, but there are also plenty of animation bugs and rough-looking scenes that'll break the immersion. A highlight is definitely the sprawling levels that encourage you to explore. Most of these areas, assuming you're not currently locked into an arena for combat, offer multiple paths in and out, so you can duck in and out of combat with ease. The music was unexpectedly excellent, making for some moody moments of exploration and, uh, cribbing from doom once again, plenty of arena battles with a pumping soundtrack. Even the voice acting is solid, despite boring back and forth conversations making up the bulk of the experience. Unfortunately, a few animation bugs are not the only problem with Necromunda Hired Gun. While playing the Xbox version for review, I got stuck on surfaces, had loot drop out of bounds, got trapped behind doors that were meant to open letting me into the next part of the level, I experienced looping sound effects, and even had several crashes to the Xbox OS during contract missions. It's hard to ignore these bugs, but ultimately I still enjoyed my time with Necromunda Hired Gun. A wants to be Doom in the Warhammer 40k universe, incorporates gameplay mechanics from other iconic first person shooter titles, and it works most of the time. I just wish it had better narrative pacing, a little less reliance on bland contract missions to get those upgrades, and maybe several months of additional polish.